Harris on the sweep. Brings it up. Coach Madelon for Youth Football Online. Today we're going to be discussing the flood route. The flood route is a fantastic passing concept done off sprint out action. If you have sprint out in your playbook and you use, utilize it often, I would highly suggest having this route in. The flood route is, does exactly what it tells you. It's a flood. It's supposed to flood the zone. So you have your trip receivers over here, number one, number two, number three. Sometimes you have this guy out wide, sometimes you have him in as a tight end. Regardless, I prefer to have a trip set, or you could even have it off an offset set. If you're under center and you're sprinting out, you could have an I-formation and the fullback could be number three. He could be out to the flat. Similar to your bunch type of concept, okay? However, as long as you have three guys involved in the route, you can flood the zone. Now, the way we've run the flood route over the past few years, number one, out here, the number one receiver is responsible to basically tell him take the light off the coverage. Okay, and how do you do that? You have to take him deep. We've experimented in years past with a post corner concept or post flag concept. However, we've gotten much better just running him deep with a nice fade route up the sideline. 95 to 98 percent of the time, maybe even more than that, he will probably never get the ball. However, it's not designed for him to get the ball unless they blow their coverage. We want to take the deepest man deepest with him. So whoever has the deep coverage, right now we have a cover three look. If it was a cover two, might be the uh, safety up high. He has to take him deep with him, and he has to keep him honest. The most important thing. We did hit the fade one year, a few years ago, but it was a busted coverage. He beat his corner deep, the cover two safety sat, and we got him deep on the fade. But the most important thing is to try to get an outside release up the sideline. We don't want an inside release where he gets bunched up near these other guys. Take a nice outside release, and get deep, take him vertical. Number two. Now, you can switch number two and number three here. You can have number two run one route, number three run the other, or change him, and we'll show that. But number two, how we've run it the last couple years, is he's going to attack deep vertical about 12 yards, and then bend it to about 14, a 14 yard out. It's going to be about 12 to 14 is what we call that. So now you have a point here, you have a point here, and here you're going to make your last point with the number three receiver. The number three receiver is going to run no deeper, very important coaching point, no deeper than a four yard out, speed out, or arrow route, whatever you want to call it, however you want to run it. You want to have them threaten up here first and then square it off? You can do that too. But most important thing is no deeper than four yards because you want to have about a nine to ten yard separation in between number two and number three. If he's deeper than four yards, you can have a defender play both, which is something you definitely don't want to have. Now, backside, what I'd like to do is always threaten with a post or a skinny post. On the back side because you can start doing things here especially when they start going true man-to-man -man coverage especially with your best athlete sprint out scheme right now it's in the gun however you want to run your scheme but the quarterback obviously will do a full roll out of the pocket sit up right here with his shoulder square okay against this coverage cover three he's going to read the strong safety outside linebacker in the 4-4 whoever it might be he's responsible for taking the flat you're going to throw off him Again, corner's going to go deep, deep third, the number one, and now you have your matchup. Number two or number three against the strong safety. Which one are you going to pick? If the strong safety decides to vacate the flat, which he shouldn't do, but if he vacates 12 to 14 and covers the curl zone instead, you hit the arrow immediately. Get the ball out to one of your kids out in space fast, tell them to turn it up. Most of the time, we'll see this strong safety especially against cover three, we'll tell him to go right now because we want him to take the flat right now. We want him to take that pass responsibility. So our number two will threaten here, and now we'll get the bigger game, 14 yard out. He'll catch it right near the sideline, get up, strong safety to the corner, or does free safety to the corner has to get him. So it's a fantastic route in terms of beating cover three. 
if you see cover two. Obviously, it's something that doesn't really change that much. If you see cover four, you're going to hit the arrow every time. We're not going to draw that one up because the flat's going to be vacated by cover four. Simple way to beat it. But if we get cover two, I'll do the same thing on the back side. You don't see too many teams give you cover two to trips, but we do have a couple teams that might do that. All right, the will will be playing out here. Same thing. D, 12 to 14, 4, 1, 2, 3. Make sure somebody takes them deep. Against this look, against cover 2, the safety should take them deep. You want to take a shot because he's sprinting out and this kid's playing far inside. You might be able to hit him on a quick fade. You can do that. But the majority of the time, let him take him deep. And now you're putting this kid in the bind. This kid's going to drop in the hook to curl. Your two kids should beat him. We always put some of our better athletes out here. You should be able to hit the hook to curl, especially since on sprint out, this will might end up getting in your quarterback's face. They might just say, anytime the quarterback sprints out, take him. Make sure he doesn't take off and start running with the ball. But if he does drop, you still got four yards, and you got 12 to 14. If he threatens now, the cover two corner is going to sit there. The cover two corner will take this kid right now because this kid's going vertical. This kid's going vertical, he won't bail because right now he sees a flat threat immediately. So that's why we'll tell him to run a true arrow here, get out here, and again, 12 to 14. No deeper. Against cover two, we might even tell this kid maybe even just go to three yards because we want this kid suckered up so we can hit this nice window right there. Now, man to man. One thing that we've done before in the past, we'll go back to that old look before is put your best athlete on the back side. Now, they go true to man to man. You get a backer over here, backer over here, corner playing with them. You can still run this, this concept, and take your best matchup. Now I'd run the up and out with him at four yards because he can beat him. Okay, and he'll threaten this way first. But they play true man, or they play man free where the safety is either bailing or He's playing over on one of these guys. Backside. This is now the time to isolate this kid. You gotta hit him one-on-one. -on -one. If he's giving you the free release inside, take him on skinny, and you got the middle, all this part of the field wide open for him. It's another way of getting the ball to one of your best athletes. The last way of running the flood route, as we said earlier, is interchanging the number two and number three guys. So if we're doing the traditional flood route, he's still running the fade. Number two and number three can switch responsibilities. This will be good against especially teams that have seen the flood before. They know you run the flood route and they just practice all week long. Number two is going to do 12 to 14. Number three is going to run the arrow. You can switch it up and it is a little bit different and they're not used to these reads. You could have the number two now run a speed out or an arrow at four. And you could have your number three run the 12 to 14. So now you're switching it up a little bit. This is again, same concept. Everything's the same in theory. All you're doing is switching number two and number three's responsibility. Number three is now the intermediate. Number two is now the shallow. Different look, something that messes with the defense again, something that gets your number three now, especially if your number three might be better than your number two, against the backer. Out of space, if he can beat the backer, that's pretty good. Gives you a lot of possibilities, gives you a lot of endless uh, combinations in terms of who to hit to beat any different coverage that you see. It's a great route. If you have sprint out, I would definitely look into uh, adding it to your offense.